Hey, ke, hey, ke, hey, ke. hi everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying your lovely day. So in this following tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to set up physics inside a blender, but we're going to be using the Wiggle V2 add-on for Blender. Now there was a version one of the Wigglebone add-on. I'm not exactly sure if they're made by the same person. Um, don't quote me on that, but there was the original Wigglebone add-on that a lot of people use, and then there's actually a newer version that came out this year uh, called Wiggle uh, Wiggle 2. I call it Wigglebone V2, but it's Wiggle 2. And basically what Wiggle 2 does is that not only does it allow you to have sort of spring bone-like physics, but finally, after a long time, they actually properly added collision without killing your PC. Because a lot of other, there's a lot of physics related add-ons to add physics to your model. However, the downside of it was that either one, the collision was very finicky to set up, or two, it caused so much lag and it was just really absurd. But with Wiggle 2, you shouldn't have much lag, unless you're a potato PC by any chance. Um, now, pretty much, also a good thing too, I will also mention for VTubers, yes, you can use this add-on, obviously, this is Blender. You can use it on a Void Mall, you can use it on a Boost Mall, you can use it on an MMD Mall, whatever. Any model that exists in Blender that has a bone and a mesh, you can use it. Um, I will be demonstrating with my avatar, but please apply your knowledge. And in case you don't know what applying knowledge means, it basically means that you're taking the knowledge I'm teaching you and you're applying it to your own situation because I cannot fully replicate your situation because everybody has different situations, basically. So please keep that in mind. If by any chance you have an issue with applying your knowledge, then please let me know via DM by dis DMing me on Discord. Or um, feel free to check out more tutorials uh, that are on Google or any by chance because, again, I do learn a lot of my stuff on Google. But I just wanted to at least elaborate that for those who uh, prefer for like a more uh, specific tutorial, I guess, which I'm not going to make a specific tutorial about Void, so please apply your knowledge to it, but either way though, uh, you, you're going to take your mall though, and I will mention as well, if you are a Void model and you're wondering how to put your mall into Blender, you're going to have to use a VRM Blender add-on, which will link in the description to download that said add-on. It's very easy to use. Um, I don't really recommend using VRM 1.0 models, but it should work with VRM 1.0 models regardless, but just saying. Um, but basically, once you have your model imported, and if by any chance you're a boost model or any other model, there are probably, uh, for boost models, you can easily ex import your FBX file if you have one. If not, then I would just recommend that, um, you know, use Unity to extract your FBX file, and as for other models, it depends on what type of model it is. You may need an add-on for it or something, I don't know depends on them all but either way uh basically what we're going to do is we're going to basically go down uh which i believe it's right about somewhere here is the wiggle to add-on i believe let me try and find it there it is so basically um because i have a lot of add-ons here um but basically the first thing though is um, basically you're going to install the Wiggle 2 add-on. It looks like this. Uh, so basically you're going to go to edit preferences and then you're basically going to go to the add-ons tab and then you're going to install the zip file. So don't extract the add-on. You're going to download the zip file then you're going to let Blender extract the zip file for you basically. So again, edit preferences add-on. And then you go to where there's install, for, you know, install add-on, and basically you'll extract the zip file from there. Um, just click the zip file, and boom. Um, if there, I believe there was a zip file. If it's in the Python file, then just select the Python file. But either way, um, you should be able to have it installed if you follow the steps correctly. And also on the Wiggle 2 GitHub, they even tell you how to install it, so yeah. Now, um, as for Wiggle 2 here, it should look like this. It should be under the animation tab on the right side. If you have a lot of add-ons like me, I can understand it can get a little finicky to navigate, so please take your time looking around, but it should be there. It should also be under Pose Library if you have Pose Library enabled. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to select on this button right here called Scene Disabled, and you're going to enable the scene for this current scene. Then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that basically... Um, you're going to enable the armature. There has to be an armature in the scene, basically. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go into pose mode because this is where you're going to set up your 
um, settings basically. So you're going to basically select the bones that you want to make into physics. Uh, so for instance, I can make it so that way my skirt can actually have physics on it basically. So I can, for instance, um, which is a good thing, you can multi-edit with this, so that's pretty cool. Just make sure to keep track of your edits. Um, and basically I can have it so that way the entire skirt can have physics, basically, which is really nice. Um, and then I can even have it where, let's say, I don't know, my wings can have uh, physics or even my hair as well, which I'll go ahead and do that real quick. So that way I can have the physics and then do that, actually, do that and that, and there you go. Now it'll, it'll all have physics, basically. Now, let's say, for example, you're pausing a lot on the physics, basically, and let's say you do go back into frames one and you're wondering why your, uh, your physics are still staying the way they are. Well, first, um, there is the global wiggle utilities you're gonna have to click on reset physics every time you do go to frame one if you're gonna do a lot of like testing and editing otherwise you can still be able to have it play the entire time and you can edit your settings live and it'll be affected so let's say for instance you see how my wings are quite shabby they just are very floppy and sloppy um basically i can have it where they can be more stiffer basically so if i increase the stiffness slider right here you can see how my wings are actually going upward basically and there you go, real time. Uh, same thing with my ponytail here. Let's say the ponytail's too drip, um, droopy. I can do the same thing by increasing the stiffness, for instance, or maybe even in, uh, lowering my mask to be a lower number. Um, it will it'll be affected real time, basically. So that's a good thing about it. And then you can even move uh, your model around if you have a hip bone, root bone, or something like that, and you can be able to test your physics basically so that's pretty cool basically now um besides that though um there is also the option of bone head and then bone tail now i personally uh would recommend just stick with bone tail if you want to make sure that your physics don't act a little derpish you can still have bone head uh but this is mainly best if you want to go for more stretchy movement with your physics if you want to keep your physics more constrained basically you'll have to make sure to select bone tail only um, of course, if you're selecting like a child bone here, it'll be bone tail only, but if you're selecting a parent, I recommend just keep the bone head off unless you just absolutely want some stretching on it. So let's say, for example, this bone right here, I would probably would want bone head to be enabled in that case, uh, because this is a halo and it would move a lot like this. So this would be like an example of where I would want Bonehead to be enabled basically and it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool what it does. We, But yeah. Uh, but you see my point basically of the whole Bonehead and bone tail basically. Now uh, the thing as well. Uh, so let's say we're gonna select this. Um, so let's say uh, for instance as well. So by the way these settings here now, you can just hover over and they'll give you like a sort of little message on what it's supposed to be, but pretty much, I would just say play around with this. Mass basically is how heavy it is, though. Stiffness is basically how stiff it is, like if it's going upward or if it droops down. Stretching is basically, again, something like what the halo may need or something similar or something that is supposed to be stretchy. Uh, it would probably need this, but I usually set it to zero for the most part. And then dampening is kind of like, again, um, basically, uh, it kind of just, you know, it's like, think of it kind of like, you know how, like, wet clothes are? It's, like, very damp. So, like, think of it like that. If it's the higher the number, basically, the more, I guess, sort of more heavy as well. Like, it's another way of heaviness, basically. Um, that's if I could describe it on memory, but yeah. And then there's, of course, gravity as well. So if you want to have it where your clothes are very, uh, you know, or your physics very floaty, then you could have that. Or if they could be really heavy, basically. So heavy would be higher number and gravity would be lower number. So it could be like you're in space, basically. Ooh. But yeah. Um, but anyways, though. Um, 
But yeah, so there's that about gravity. Now, as for wind, you're probably wondering, how the heck do you set up wind for this? Well, let me show you how to do that. So in order to set up wind for your physics, what you're going to do is you're going to go to Shift A, you're going to go into Force Field, and you're going to basically select the Force Fields shown. And there is, of course, the wind option right here, basically. So Shift A, Force Field, and then there's wind right here. Uh, it's the second option, basically. And then this is going to be your wind. So the arrows here will tell you what direction the wind will be um, so let's say for example we're going to use the skirt for instance to demonstrate the wind right so we're gonna do that so we're gonna select the wind or uh, the skirt physics excuse me um, we're gonna select these skirts here and let's go ahead and quickly like make this more stiffer basically um, so let's do that and let's say we're gonna set all these so it has wind we can have it so that way we can increase the number here so as you can see, there is wind going on, basically. And of course, if we want to go basically the opposite way, we can also do that as well. So basically, this could be great for a wind controller if you want to animate it. And of course, yes, you can press the I key if you want to register keyframes. So you can animate these physics, which is really cool. So that's a really good benefit of this, basically. So wind... And, uh, yeah, so that's how you set that up, basically. Now, of course, uh, besides the wind, basically, the last thing, and the most important thing that everyone has been asking, how do you set up colliders? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Now, of course, the, the benefit of how Blender is, we can actually go pretty crazy with how our physics are. However, I would honestly recommend, if possible, please stick with simple geometric shapes if you can. Um, otherwise... Based on my experience, I did try to have it where the bones react with how my leg meshes, and for some reason, it acted really crazy. So, if I were you, probably as a start, start off with having simple spheres. Uh, thankfully, with how the wiggle bones, uh, the wiggle V2 is, is that you can actually have it where it's set to a collection, basically. Um... So let's say you have a collection where it'll have like these dedicated spheres basically. Uh, so that can definitely be pretty nice you know, to keep things organized. So that's a really good thing about it. However, we can pretty much have it where it's just object, whichever your case is basically. And we can set it to where it's sphere uh, for the skirt, uh, the skirt physics here. And basically when the sphere goes around, it should be able to collide. Uh, so let me actually quickly double check real fast um just to make sure so those bones are fine made sure that it's set to sphere that is set to object uh and also got double check yeah so i gotta make sure sphere because it wasn't reacting all right so let me actually quickly just reselect this since it's not working right now so let me reselect the uh skirt bones here like this, uh, do that, click one of the bones at least, and then reset it so it's like that. That way they can all be sphere, yeah. So make sure you do that, just, just want to make sure in case it doesn't work for you, do that. And then we can now have it so the sphere can be able to properly collide with the skirt. Um, of course my skirt is pretty big, but when it touches the bone, it will basically do that. So that's pretty cool, and of course, you can go pretty advanced with your setup. So, um, you can have it where basically, um, if possible, again, maybe set up a collection for this if you want to have body set up. So, maybe, perhaps, I would, you know, I would say experiment depends on the setup you want, because some may go a little bit more advanced than others, some may want it simple. But basically, make it so that way, um, there's like a sort of collection, so that way there's like a... Um, these spheres are technically, like, in a way, parented to the armature, basically. Um, but yeah, so... But either way, you can experiment with that, though, pretty much, uh, setting up with the armature and all that, um, depending on your rig setup and all that, how simple, how complex you are. But pretty much in a nutshell, though, as long as you set up the collision properly, you could be able to have proper collision without lagging too much. But you're still probably going to experience some lag, though. I will say as a heads up, depending on how much collision you have. So please be mindful if you're a potato PC, basically. So with that being said, though, that's pretty much that in a nutshell, at least. So keep that in mind. But 
either way, uh, you can even set up the collision, um, like how big the, the colliders will be, how much friction, like how much, uh, you know, they're affected by the surface, how much bounciness will they have when collision, and if they're sticky and all that. So that's pretty cool. And of course, set it to chain if you wish. Um, and the last thing I want to also go over is the, uh, again, just want to make sure I go over the global wiggle utilities here. Um, just as a, you know, just making sure. So you can be able to select enabled, which is actually pretty good. So in case you are trying to find out which bones have the physics, just select uh, enable here. And which that is pretty cool. So it's a lot more easier to basically select it. You can also copy settings to select it as well, which is pretty cool if you're trying to transfer settings to other uh, bones, basically. So that's pretty nice. And uh, of course, you can reset physics so that way your bones will be at, you know, its original position so let's say if you are going to test your physics for vrm and you're finished and you say yep that's the physics i want um basically before you export your model make sure you click on reset physics so that way you can properly export without it being weird basically um although usually for me personally it was how uh i export usually i would just completely disable wiggle to temporarily and then re enable it back um but there's that and then loop physics usually i keep that on by default it's basically um if this uh, time lap, this little uh, timeline here keeps on, we're playing over and over. It should have the physics loop basically. So you want to keep that on. Otherwise, if you don't want it on, uh, probably because if you're doing like I don't know real time mocap or something, then you can disable it. But then there's also quality, of course, which I would probably keep it as two uh, because of course the higher it may use a bit more, you know, it may use a bit more resources. But two is fine. I wouldn't touch that if I were you. And also, if you're ever going to do some Blender render animations, so you're going to render your character, you have a mocap set up on your character or some animation, whatever the frick it is, and you want to add your physics and you're ready to render it. But the thing is, is that every single time that you uh, keep rendering your character, the physics keep changing, it's inconsistent, and it's just also there is a lot of bugs with your physics. How do you fix that? Well, that's what, where baking comes in. Baking will allow us so that way the physics are more consistent every time you render. And also, so, um, as well, you can make some more corrections with your physics, basically, uh, when it's baked. So that's pretty cool. So you can be able to big wiggle, and it should be able to have it if you have an animation, which I don't have an animation, but you can utilize the bake option to help you with your animations, which I highly recommend do so. Um, any sort of physics simulation, whether physics or water or anything like that, is very important if you bake it before you render it, um, you know, just to... Play it safe and also make your corrections if possible or if necessary. But either way though, uh, that should pretty much cover the whole thing about the, um, or at least I should uh, enable this back, but basically in a nutshell though, for the most part, uh, you should be able to have your, basically your wiggle, bone, uh, all that basically, yay. There goes my freaking bones though, what the frick. Um, let me just reset physics. There you go. So you should be able to have your physics working, basically, if you follow whatever the heck I did. Uh, of course, it'll take time to have the right settings, though, and set up your collision, your wind, and whatever the heck, basically. But overall, that should pretty much at least cover how to actually properly do physics inside of Blender, or at least a simple way of doing physics, having collision, having everything else, and just going wild, but also staying simple at the same time without overcomplicating stuff. Unless you're going to go over uh, being, you know, let's say you're a realistic mall and you want to have hair particles and that other crazy stuff, then that's a completely different story for that, which I'm not going to go over in this video, but I'm going over the simple way of physics. And I'm probably never ever going to make a tutorial about hair physics on particles unless I'm interested or something like that. But either way, though, I hope you guys have a lovely day. Let me know if you have any other questions. I'll put my social media here if you have any other questions about it. But feel free to check out the GitHub for the Wiggle 2 add-on. I highly recommend, um, you know, check it out, download it. It's free. Um, and play around with it. This is a really great add-on. I recommend every Blender user have it, um, unless you don't do physics or something like that. I don't know, or something, or you do crazier stuff. I don't know. Uh, but that's up to you. But either way, have a lovely day, everyone. Hey, 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 everyone. I hope to see you guys next time, okay? Bye!